Hello everyone, welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where tonight the Quincy Presidents will play host to the Hingham Harbormen in a Patriot League Keenan division matchup. My name is Jonathan Clare. We want to thank you for joining us for this edition of QATV Sports. I'm being joined in the booth by Noel DeBona. And uh, Noel, Quincy Presidents come into this game with a record of 3-2, and two, but the two losses they have have been won by one point each. First to Braintree and then their last game on October 4th to Silver Lake. Yeah, it's been tough for, you know, Quincy, you know, coming out this season. They have a lot of uh, juniors playing out there. You know, uh, not a lot of experience. They had a big senior class that, uh, that graduated this past year. And, um, you know, it's, been, it's, been, it's, it's a learning curve. You know, they had some kids that didn't play last year. They came back out. Uh, basketball player uh, JT Bain is in his, you know, his second season. He played as a freshman, didn't play as a sophomore, came back. Um, now is the wide receiver as a junior, which has helped out the offense for James Lamb. Um, they're just getting introduction with the, uh, the running back situation with uh, Alexandre, uh, Hanscom Fields, and, and also Kenny Garcia is down with the injury with the foot. So um, they're going to be, you know, right now you're, you're in their game, game six. Um, they're on a bye week last week, so they had some time to prepare for this. So I, I see some good things here for tonight um, other than the Kenny Garcia uh, injury. It looks like uh, the team will be out there ready to go. Um, Hingham, strong club even though they're two and three. Here they go with the, um, the, the captains and the coin toss. Maybe we can go down to the field and uh, listen to them. All right, so we're gonna have the captains come out onto the field and we'll go down for the coin toss with our referee. All right, guys, take a look. Football players is the head. D is the tails. What are you calling, son? Tails is called. It's a, it's a head. You want the ball, right? Okay, what end, guys? Put your backs to the goal, you're gonna defend. Blue wins the toss, receives. White will defend this goal and kick toward the clock. Good luck, men. All right, so the Presidents won the toss, Noel, and they decided they want to get the ball right away. They're going to be defending the south end zone, and Hingen will be defending the north end zone. Before the national anthem, we're going to go to the QATV weather report. It's a fantastic night here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. 60 degrees, clear skies, and just a slight west wind, 7 miles per hour, but a fantastic night here at the stadium for a ball game. This is the second game here tonight. We had a doubleheader where North Quincy took on Pembroke, uh, unfortunately losing that game, but that was the 430 game. We will pause now for our national anthem. So the national anthem performed by the combined Quincy and North Quincy High School choirs. All right, so I guess we're getting ready to come out onto the field again. Quincy comes into the ball game with a record of three and two and one and one in the division. Um, I believe they are still in the hunt knoll for a playoff berth. Uh, they need to win this game and next week against Duxbury in Duxbury if they want to have a chance though. Uh, and that could create a three-way tie on top of the division. Uh, I know with the new playoff system, there's some different uh, tiebreakers, and it could come down to the power ranking tiebreaker. So I, I think they still have a chance, but I'm not 100% sure. Yes, you know, you just got to go out tonight and take care of business, what's on the field. You can't really worry about tiebreakers and stuff. Um,
Quincy um, is doing well at home. I mean, they're undefeated here. <laughs> they're 2-0. and um, So, you know, there's their third game at home. And um, I, I think you know, having the bye week to be able to go over material, um, taking a look at the old game against Silver Lake and saying, what did we do wrong? How did we lose by one point? Um, you correct those things and you have a little bit more time to prepare um, for this game against Hingham. You can you also scout them last week. Um, and they played Silver Lake. So, um, you know, they had played Silver Lake the week before. They went down, they watched Hingham play them. So um, they know what they know what they're up against. They know what they be, were able to do against Silver Lake, and now they got Hingham this week. So it, it was a great week to have off for them right in the middle of the season. So uh, here goes the kickoff, and uh, we're ready to go here, Jonathan. Last year, Quincy beat Hingham 42-39 to 39, uh, at Hingham. So Quincy would certainly like to duplicate that as well. All right, kick goes deep, and we feel the by number seven for the Presidents. And that is Jolly Hanson Fields. He breaks free, and he's going to keep on going. He was carrying, literally carrying, a uh, Hingham Harbourman player, and he's going to get up to the 45-yard line. Great run by Hanson Fields. Anytime he touches the ball, you just never know he's going to be able to break it. Now he's given great field position here, a 46-yard line going into Hingham. So they got 46 yards to go here to make it in, and this is great field position to start off the game. Hanscom Fields, he's already returned two kickoffs from, um, to the house, so he, he can definitely break it. All right, Quincy's led by their quarterback, number five, James Lamb. He's a junior. Ball spotted at the 46-yard line. Lamb looking to pass, pass, looking way downfield, and it is incomplete, but we're going to have a flag thrown. Pass was intended for number 85 for the presence, JT Bain. Uh, it's going to be a pass interference. It's just a question whether it's offensive or defensive if we take a look at the play. You know, they came into the double slot here, and they looked for JT Bain right away. You might as well give it and shoot it out, and um, the guy was holding him down the field right there, and, and JT um, is going to get... I think it's the, at the field, at, at, at the spot of where it is. It's, it's 10 yards, I believe. Uh, different rules here in high school football. So it won't be the uh, spot of the Defensive foul. Defensive holding, 10 yard penalty, automatic, first down. All right, so you're going to say it was defensive holding. Okay. So that goes up to the 36 yard line. And as you heard, it's an automatic first down. So first and 10 for the presence at the Hingham 36. Lamb again looking to pass. Rolls out of the pocket, he's going to run it himself now, gets up to the 30-yard line, up to the middle of the Great field, run. up to the 20, breaking free still, and he'll get all the way up to the 10-yard line. Great run by James Lamb. I like what Coach Reardon's doing right now. He's spreading out the field, and you give Lamb a lot of room in the middle to do what he needs to do. And we'll see on the replay right here, uh, he's eluded out of the pocket. He's got great athletic feet. Boom, he moves to the right, gets the room, gets the first down, outfakes him, and keeps on moving. Uh, you know, Lamb is just elusive in the open field. This is a great offense to run with this double slot or, or, or a slot right receiver down the bottom of the screen. So um, now they may change a little bit down closer into the uh, goal line area. All right, first and goal for the Presidents at the 10 yard line. Lamb in the shotgun. Alex Alexandre is the man behind him. Lamb's gonna roll out the pass. And he's going to bring him himself, gets to the five-yard line, cuts back up in, and goes in for the touchdown. The Presidents come back out on three plays, and they put six up on the board. You know, having that, that, that whole week to prepare with the bye week, it's looked, they look very sharp here in the opening possession here. We're going to look at the replay here. Um, they fake it to Alexandre. He turns the other way. Watch this. He turns the other way. He's, he's looking. He's looking. Nothing there. Okay, I'm going to run. <coughs> and gets right in. Beautiful. Just about untouched there goes Lamb. Extra point attempt coming up now. Tomas Silver puts it up and through the uprights for the extra point. So the Presidents, as I mentioned, score quickly. 9.47 left to go in the first quarter, and they lead 7 to nothing. Yeah, I also see Jalen Green and Jaquan Harris down on the sidelines um, with the Quincy Presidents. They're up at uh, Framingham State right now, and I think they're both actually starters. I uh, don't officially know for sure, but I, I, I've spoken to some of the other players. So they're down in the field. They're pumping up this, this their, their, their former team last year. So um, a couple of alumni guys on the field helping them out. Um, I think that also is good for James Lamb to look over and say, you know, uh, give him a little encouragement. So um, Lamb looked really good in that opening drive. He came out there, he looked poised, he looked like a veteran, and, and he just he took it down the field. Now that's 
really good, you know, uh, maybe a minute and 15 into the game, um, and they score. Good drive. Yeah, it certainly was. Went right down the field and it started off with a, uh, a nice run as well by um, Java Handsome Fields on the kick return to set them up with nice field position, but the offense did the rest there. So again, 7 nothing presidents. As you said, Noel, with 9.47 left to go here in the first quarter, just underway here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. All right, Silva getting ready to kick off for the Presidents. Seeks to receive for the Harbourman, number five, Sam Finger. And Silva will kick it deep. Going to bounce at the 20 and feel at the 15 by Hingham. Number 13, Austin Irvin gets it for Hingham and will bring it back up to the 40 yard line. He did a great job on that. You get it right up in the wedge and you get as many yards as you possibly can. He got it up to the 40 yard line. So that's decent field position um, for Hingham. Not, not spectacular, not like, like Quincy did, but that, you know, you get up to the 35 and 40 yard line, you're not going 80 yards. You're going, you're going now they gotta go 60. So that, that's pretty good. You, you're taught to get up in that wedge. Yeah, head coach for the Hingham, Paul Killinger, will certainly take this field position any day of the week, to, at least to start off with, that's for sure. Caleb Brody is the quarterback for the Harbormen. Little jet sweep to the right. Handoff goes to number five, Sam Benger. Number five, Benger on the carry to the 48. This style of offense that Hingham's running is, is very good on this type of uh, turf. Um, you get to move a little faster. It's almost like a, a college style offense. They're gonna run some jet sweeps. Um, they have a double slot, but they, they, they push them in a little bit, almost like little wing tees. So you, you may see a lot of misdirections tonight. Um, under center, right now with the quarterback, um, you, can, you can put yourself into the pistol. Um, right now he goes to. So there's a lot of options. Now they spread it out. Second down for Haberman. Brody looking to pass downfield and miscommunication there between him and his receiver. Receiver ran an in uh, pattern, a curl pattern at the 45-yard uh, line, and Brody threw it all the way down to the 20. Yeah, it looks like you see Robbie Monroe out there, number 40, that's going to be playing a corner position. Now, he regularly is, is, is a bigger kid, and he usually plays like a linebacker or maybe even defensive end. Uh, Kenny Garcia being down number 34, uh, looks like he's going to play corner tonight. Um, they may try to pick on him out there. Uh, he's a pretty good athlete. He plays baseball and basketball and a very outstanding baseball player, an all-star this past year. He, he, he hits home runs for power and uh, he's also uh, hits for average as well. So he's out there in the corner. All right, third down and three now for Hingham. Hingham goes right up the middle, but they will not go anywhere. Nice job by the presidents to hold up the runner and stuff them. And they're going to get a gain. Actually, I'm surprised they got as much yards as they did. They're going to get up to the 49 for a gain of two. So bring up a fourth and one. You know, that, that's a risky play there to go to quarterback sneak. Um, they're at the halfway point of the field, so you might go for it with a fourth and one here. It's about fourth and, yeah, fourth and one. Yeah, fourth and one here for the Harbormen at the 49, their own 49. Quincy bring the line up. Oh, they got and him stopped they here. they certainly do. Nice job by the Presidents. Hanson Fields comes up and makes the stop as well as number 52 for the Presidents, uh, Dan Garente. Great job by the, the Quincy defense there. You know, you're going to watch that jet sweep. You're going to say, okay, we're going to gamble on this play. If he goes in that jet sweep, he goes in motion, we're going to just going to go right after him. We'll blitz him, and that's exactly what the Quincy presidents do. This is a great break for them early in the game again. Let's see what uh, Lamb does, bringing in the troops. All right, ball is at the 48-yard line for the presidents, and they'll take over first and 10. Quincy has three men in the slot to the right of Lamb. Alexandria is a low man in the backfield. Alexander, nice block to get Lamb free. He's gonna pass the ball and it is incomplete. It was intended for Robbie, number 40, Robbie Monroe. Before, yep. Monroe. You know, that's all passes so far. They haven't run the football yet, so they're, they're giving Lamb some space. 
You know, you go wide side of the field, you roll out to the right, and it gives you just continue to roll out, roll out, roll out as long as you can. And, and if you want to run, you can run as, when you get over the line of scrimmage. So, you know, no, no running plays yet. So let's see what happens here. It's second and ten. All right, Lamb goes under center. All right, Coach Bill Radin's calling an audible from the sideline. Lamb back the pass, and he's going to have to get flushed out of the pocket. He's going to try to make something happen, but he cannot, and he's going to get sacked. Coming up there with the sack was John Henry Johnson for the Harbormen. This is a tough situation for Quincy because now it's it's third and you know 16 third and 17 it, you have you must pass on this it's just unless you want to go field position and run a uh, run a draw, draw play and then punt but you know um, that's what happens when you try to roll out like that and you know Hingham sniffed it out pretty well the ends stayed out there and uh, then contained and and they contained him in the pocket you don't want Lamb outside that pocket in which Hingham is going to be taught to, to keep him in there yeah, if he gets outside the pocket, as we saw, he can make things happen. He is certainly quick and very elusive. Third and long, third and 16 now for Quincy at their own 46-yard line. And they're going to run the draw now to Hanson Fields, trying to get outside to the left. And breaks one tackle, gets across the 50 up to the 45-yard line. And he gets spun down and brought Number down. The They're going to mark him at the 44. Not a bad play call, and I said that this going to be the only run and play that you're going to actually do. Uh, right now, early in the game, they may just punt and go and go for field position right now, and, and you, you don't want to risk it too much at the 45 going in. So and You can play field position tonight, you know, and you got a lead now. I know it's early, but... Defense is playing good, so you might as well put it on the defensive side. All right, James Lamb back to kick it away for the Presidents. Good snap, and he gets a nice kickoff, nice high kick. And it's going to bounce at the 10. Look at this. And it takes a fantastic roll for the Presidents. It will go out of bounds at the 9-yard line. Well, that's that's what you want to do on your punt. If you're going to do a draw play and you're not going to make the first down, you know, and Lamb's a pretty good punter out there. Um, didn't let the, the the back man take the punt, so he wasn't able to return it, and he kicked it right out of bounds at the nine. So now they're going to go 91 yards. Um, this is great for Quincy. They just have to contain as well, just like Hingham did with Quincy. All right, so first and 10 for the Harbormen at their own nine-yard line. 6.22 left to go in the first quarter. Caleb Brody, the quarterback, for the Harbormen. Has four receivers and one man behind him in the backfield. Liam McCarthy is the fullback in the backfield. And they'll give it to McArthur, no, excuse me, McCarthy. He's gonna get up to the 13 yard line on the run. To the 45 on the carry, Liam McCarthy. He's a big back. I don't have his exact stats in front of me. Oh, yes, we do. 6'1", uh, 230. That's a big back out there for, for high school football. 230, um, I mean, that, that's a good size um, slash NFL running back. So, you know, Quincy players are going to have to take him down if he's a traditional fullback. He might be in there sometimes at tail. But he, uh, looking at him from here on the, in, the, in the booth, he looks big. He certainly is, no. Sam Benger gets the carry for the Harbormen, trying to get outside to the left side, and he's going to get the first down and more. Hanson Fields, a big hit to Bye. knock him out of bounds. This kid's got speed, this tailback number five. Um, he's a senior. He's 5'8", 160. Uh, we'll watch this on the replay. He just get right through the hole. It's not there. Bounce it outside. You're taught, really, number 10 has got to contain a little bit better. You, you can't let anybody outside you, and uh, just take a little bad angle, and... He's got the first down. So it's taking them out of the nine yard line. Now they're on the 25, so they're not in that red zone on the other side. So Quincy's got to do a little better job than that. Armani Cardoso also over there to push the ball carry out of bounds and help with the tackle. First and 10 at the 25 for Hingham. Brody looking to pass, and it is. Is it picked off? Yes, yes. number 40 for the Quincy Presidents. Rob Monroe picks it off. Great job on Rami Monroe. He got good position. Um, they were battling for the football, and it's 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 up for grabs, and he takes it away from him. So great job, great break, 
and uh, Quincy's going to get the ball here. So good play there, a great play by Robbie Monroe to cut in front of the intended receiver and pick that ball off. So Quincy will have it at the Hingham 46-yard line, first and 10, Presidents. Being told no that our replay, we're having some technical difficulties with the replay, so we're going to try to get that fixed at halftime. Okay. So unfortunately, we won't have some replays here in the first half, but we'll get that ready for you. Alex Alexandre on the carry, gets stuffed, goes outside now, gets across the 40, and he's going to be close to a first down. Looks like he gets up to the 37. He had a little injury a few weeks ago, and um, he, I think looking at him from up in the booth here, he doesn't look like he's limping anymore. So it, it, was, it was a knee, I believe or an ankle, and he was having problems the last game here at home, and it looks like, you know, having a bye week like that, you're able to recover two weeks to get to game prep. So he looks really 100% um, out there right now. Great run. Yeah, bye week came at a pretty good time for the Presidents right in the middle of the season. Uh, helped the Presidents heal some of those bruises and bones. Alexandre on the carry, he'll have the first down. Nice job by him, pushes across the 35. And we'll get up to the 34-yard line to move the chains for the Quincy Presidents. One great thing about Alexandre number two is he's he's a, he's a tailback in this in this set, but he can be a fullback and he can get those and hammer away and get those yardages in the middle. Um, he's a great back. He knows how to put his head down and go and get those yardage. He knows where the first down marker is and he went and got it there. Very important to move those chains and he did a good job. Now you open up the playbook here on first and um, and ten. You're inside 34 here. JT Bain goes wide left for the Presidents. Monroe in the slot. And Lamb's going to carry it himself over to the left side, across the 30 yard line, and it gets popped but still stays up. Bill Pershing was trying to tackle him for the Harborman but could not bring him down. But Lamb will get up to the, you'll see they marked the ball, the 28. You always want to get Lamb outside there, outside the, basically the hashes or outside the, you know the box and I'll tell you when he's in open field anything can happen he was rolling out to his left there and he just took the ball and, and, and actually they all faked out with Alexandre going up the middle so it brings up a nice second and four which is great in, in this in this down this deep so they get a lot they can they can set up to do here so as you said no second down and four we're coming under three minutes now in the first quarter Land back to pass, and looking for Moreau over the right side, and it is incomplete. A flag is thrown on the field, though. If it's thrown down there, it possibly could be a holding penalty, but it is. Holding against the president. Ten-yard penalty. Holding, number 51 of the offense, 10 yard penalty, remains second down. That was Robbie Monroe's brother, Mike Monroe. He's on the offensive line. I think he's, he's only a sophomore, and he's out there playing tonight. So um, Robbie's a senior, and his younger brother, Mike, is, a, is, a, is actually a sophomore. He's actually at the center position. You might have seen a blitz or something and had to pick it up. So second down and 14 now for Quincy. Lamb in the shotgun, and he gives it to Alexandre, and he gets hit in the backfield and can go nowhere. Nice job by Haberman to come up and stop that play before it got started. Jackson Perkins was the man who came up to stuff that play for the Haberman. Ball gets up to the 40, it's a loss of two. Quincy's going backwards now. You know, they had the penalty with the holding, and now, you know, they gained no yards and lost a few here, so they're bringing up another third and 15 here. Uh, it's going to be a tough conversion here, so let's see what Quincy does here. Third and 16 now for the Presidents. Hingham showing blitz, and they hold off. Lamb rolling out to his right side, and it fires and is luckily not intercepted. Threw it right into the hands of a Hingham defender, Kevin Haney. Bring up down. Looks like they'll definitely the punt president. this one. Maybe get another good punt out of Lamb, put it, push him back. So 
not much you can do there. You know, you have a holding penalty, you get negative yards, and you, you set up a third and 16, and it's, it's, it's a tough play to convert. Yeah, certainly they had second down and four, and that hold pushed them back. So tough break there for Quincy. They're deep in the Harborman territory, but they are forced to punt. Lamb back there to do the punting duties. And he gets a nice high kickoff yet again. Nice coverage down there by the Presidents, and it's going to take a Hingham bounce, but Quincy's able to jump on it quickly at the 17-yard line, excuse me, the 16-yard line. Tomas Silver downs it for the Presidents. The Harbormen did not come out real sharp here to start off the game, you know, the first quarter uh, with a couple of the possessions that they've had. So uh, Quincy's done a pretty good job with containing. They have to continue to contain. They can't let number five out, out of that. Uh, Sam Benger, he's, he's a good back. He's, he's got some great speed. Um, he sets up. He's in a wing tee now. He, he can actually set up a tailback as well. So they're going to move him around. They like to jet sweep him as well. Right, Quincy was short a man down on the field, so they're gonna they're trying to rush him in, but they're gonna call a timeout to play it safe. So that's their first call, first timeout of the first half. You don't want to take a risk, you know. Um, it's not bad calling the timeout here, uh, making sure all their men's on the field because you know they could they could break one right away, and it, the whole complexity of the game can change. So. Very good little time out there. 143 left to go in the first quarter. Quincy on top, 7-0 on an early touchdown, only a minute and 15 into the ball game. And they're going to pitch it to number five, Sam Benger, trying to get outside. Nice pursuit by the Presidents, and he's going to go nowhere. If he's lucky, he'll get a yard on the play. Let's see where they spot him. And they're going to say no gain. So he did all that running and he didn't gain any yardage. And that's how you do it is you contain and you string it out, you string it out, you string it out. And next thing you know, the sideline's there. And that you use that to your advantage. And that's exactly what Quincy did. So you just string it out. You, you take care of your own areas. Uh, corner's got to come up and contain. And, and that's what Quincy needs to do to tonight. Second down and 10 now for Hingham. Benger goes in motion again this time. Nice job there by Quincy and coming up to make the big play was number 70, Abraham Hody. Wow, great play. That's what you needed. He, he must have shot a gap, got through, and made a great play. And, and now look at Hingham now. It's third and 14 for them. And they've pinned him pretty good here. So they can do a lot of things out of this. If they're going to pass, if you, contain, if you stay in your positions and play it well, it's a great opportunity to get a nice interception and take it to the house. I mean... It's early to say that, but you just never know. Hingham's in a situation where maybe the only running play that they can do is, is, is a draw play as well. So we'll see what Quincy does here. All right, so as you said, third and long, third and 14 for the Harbormen. And they're going to hand the ball up the middle, but Quincy was not fooled on that one. Benger again on the carry. He's going to get to the 13-yard line. So gain of one on the play, and now force Hingham to punt. And actually, that's going to be the end of the first quarter, so they'll punt for the first play of the second quarter. 7 nothing Quincy as we switch sides. That was a little double, uh, that was a jet sweep reverse, basically. Um, Plymouth South last year ran that a lot against Quincy and did very successful against them, and uh, I think they must have been watching that playbook and saying, hey, we can try this double reverse, I mean, jet sweep reverse, and... They tried it right there, and I'll tell you, Squin Quincy did a great job on sniffing it out. Um, good first quarter for Quincy. Um, they had some chances to capitalize, and penalties have stopped them. Harbormen have the same situation. Um, good first quarter, though. Well, we'll see what Quincy can do on this punt. As we know, they have some explosive players in Alexandre and Handsome Fields. Um, and as we've seen, Handsome Fields, he can uh, return the ball very well. The last time we were here for the Presidents, uh, we saw them against Whitman Hanson. Handsome Fields had a uh, touchdown return on a kickoff to start the second half. Um, I believe it was 70-plus yards, give or take, to uh, bring it back to the house. So we'll see if Quincy can do something on the return game. And again, we saw him just to open the game uh, here tonight. He had a nice return for the Presidents. And to set up that nice drive, it was three plays and a touchdown for the presidents. 
I haven't seen Hanska Field in the backfield yet as well. He was in the backfield once. I tell you, he's such an explosive player. At some point of the game, you got to give him some touches. You know, Coach Ridden, um, you know, you got to give him at least 10 touches to see what he can do with the football. Um, I don't know. We were, we were talking before before the before we put this on here, and Jonathan, I was trying to see what in the Silver Lake game, um, what kind of touches and carries that each player had. Um, they lost by 1.21-20. Uh, I'll tell you, this kid's so explosive. When he touches the football, you just never know what's going to happen. So we'll see on this punt what happens. All right, Hingham is back to kick it away. That's Sam Benger to kick it. Robin Monroe's going to field it at the 46-yard line. He's going to reverse uh, field, excuse me. And he might have been better going down before he reversed. He's going to lose a couple of yards on the play. Actually, that was number 44 in the carry. Excuse me, Jake Berg. No, yeah, no, I was right. I was right. Yep, that was yep. number 40. Sorry. Two games, John. I'll give you a little credit. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back to back games are tough. You. Wait, oh, wait a minute. North, North Quincy's not out there right now. Quincy's out there. So, <laughs> Mr. Jim Timmons said, uh, "Noel, you're going to take over tonight. Uh, I did the first game. You can take the second game. <laughs> you got double duties, John." There's the ball spotted at the 49-yard line. First and 10 for the Presidents. Alexandria on the carry, cuts it back up the middle. Nice move by him to get some positive yardage on that play. He'll get up to the 41-yard line. Great thing about Alexandria is he sees a little bit of a hole, and he'll take it. He'll take the eight grooging, grooging, battling yards, set up a second and two. I mean, that's what's great about number two. He's willing to go find the hole, take what he can get, get as many yards as he can, and it sets up a nice, you know, a situation here. You can run again here. High formation behind the quarterback for the Presidents, number five, James Lamb. And oh. they give it to number two, that is Alexandre, but he cannot get anything going on that play. Jake Brody did a great job, number 33 for Hingham, 6'1", 210. He's only a sophomore, he blitzed right through. Um, blocker could not get him enough. He pulled his hand out and grabbed his shirt, and it goes from second and two to uh, third and four now. So lost two yards. Coming up on nine and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Presidents, as you said, with a third and four. Land looking to pass. Fires downfield, and it is oh. almost intercepted. Uh, Bill Pershing had the hand go in and out of his had the ball, excuse me, go in and out of his hands, could not bring it in. Looks like they're gonna have to set up another punt. You know, Quincy's got some decent field position and they're not be able to capitalize. At some point of this game, and I'll always say it, number seven's got to be put and inserted in this game because the kid is just explosive. Alexandre's the power back. He'll get you your yards. But on certain plays, Hanscom feels the guy that's going to take it to the house. Right, again, Lamb will punt it away. Sam Benger, number five, is back to receive for the Harborman. And it's going to be a fake punt. Quincy has it, Robin Rowe has it, he has the first down and more, gets up 30 yard line, and a great play there by the Presidents. Caught Hingham off guard, and they're gonna move the chains on the fake punt. Great time to take a fake, you know, you're at midfield, 45 yard line. If it, if it fails, they still gotta go 55, 60 yards, so that was a good gamble to, to do that, and, and Lamb's the punter, so, you know, he's, he's very big weapon back there, so great play call by Coach Reardon. Ball up to the 27-yard line, first and 10 for the Presidents. Alexandria on the carry, over to the left side. Stops, cuts back up the middle. And nice running by okay, him. By He'll get inside two, the 20, Alexandre. up to the 18-yard line. It'll be about a yard shy of the first down. That's Alexandre at his best right there, picking a hole and going for another nine yards. Did it eight yards on the last series. Nine. He's, a, he's a good size back, I'll tell you. So second down and one for Quincy. The 
They get to Alexandre Lamb in trouble trying to get away. And he does a nice job just to try to get back some of the yards there. He'll get up to the 21-yard line, but it's a loss of three on the play. Just when Quincy got something going again, second and one, they lose two yards, three yards again, and now you're setting up a third and four. You know, changes the whole complexity of what you can throw in the playbook. It's all about moving the chains tonight, you know, and uh, Pingham's doing a great job defensively. They have been sniffing it out. They, they, they've keeping Lamb in the pocket right there, and um, look what happens. Third and four now for the Presidents. Hingham shows blitz. They're bringing everybody. Pass is complete at the 13-yard line, at the 10 for the Presidents, and push out of bounds goes number 45, Jalen Chase. That's a great play call right there. If you're, you're going to do that, they're going to all be focusing on two. Uh, Robin Monroe, they're going to be focusing on JT Bain. You just push that little full, that big full back into the, the, the flats. All right, so first and goal from the eight now for the Presidents. Full house backfield behind Lamb. Alexandre on the carry. Ball carry yeah, by he's going to get a gain of Alex, one, Alex maybe, Andre. on the play. No gain. You see Coach Reed on the sideline going, follow that your block, follow your block. Me. You got the two big backs back there. They throw Hines in the backfield over there with the, um, the you know, you know uh, as the other fullback, and uh, he just didn't follow his blockers on that. Coach Reed, you can you could see him from the sidelines going, follow your block. So no gain on that play. Second and goal from the eight now. 6.30 left to go in the second quarter. Quincy on top by a score of seven to nothing, trying to add to that right now. Alexandria again on the carry over to the right side and almost broke free, but could not get through those two tackles All of Hingham. Two, Alex Looks like he's gonna get up to the six yard line. Yeah, that's a power eye is what, they, what they're doing, is um, power eye right, power eye left, so. They've run into the power eye this last two times. Hines on the left side the first time, and Hines on the right side the second time. So, you know, set up third and seven here. And third and goal to go. They mark the ball at the seven yard line, so only a gain of one for Alexandre on that carry. Man goes in motion for the Presidents. Lamb looking for a man in the back of the end zone and is broken up at the last minute by Sam Benger for the Harbor Men. Pass was intended for number 44, Jake Bergonzi. You're in four down territory and they knew it, so they went out with that set. From the seven yard line of Hingle. They put Heinze in motion and uh, they tried to backside tight, you know, front side tight end. Uh, Lamb does not roll as well to his left. He's a, you know, a traditional right-hander. He rolls a little bit very better to his right. Um, they wanted to go into the wide side of the field, which they had to go left than the right hash right now. All right, so fourth and goal for the Presidents at the seven-yard line. Low snap. Lamb's able to hold it. Looking to pass. Fires in the end zone, and it is complete to Hines. That's Touchdown, Presidents. To Matt Hines made a great catch in traffic for the Presidents. And a bullet pass by James Lamb, and the Presidents put the second touchdown up on the board with 5.28 left to go in the half. Great catch by Hines, I'll tell you. He bulleted that in, just like you said, John, and um, he did a great job with catching it. You know, Hines is only in there on goal line. He says, hey, if they're going to throw me the ball, I've got to catch this and score. So he doesn't get back there much, so touchdown made President. it capitalize out of it. Silver for the extra point. And it was a low snap, but it looked like he was able to get it up and in, and he did. Wow, nice job by Silva. And also number 40 for the Presidents, uh, Robin Rowe, the holder. It was a low snap, but they did a great job to get that up and in. So the Presidents will come back downfield with 5.28 left to go in the second quarter, up by a score of 14 to nothing. 
Quincy's doing a better job with their extra points. Looks like Silva's been practicing a lot. Uh, so you got Robbie Monroe with the, with the holder, and he, you know, bat, you know, whether it be a bobbled snap or whatever, he gets it down on the tee, uh, on the block, and he was able to kick it through. Very important high school football that you make your extra points. They've made two tonight, so you know it's 14-0. That's really good for Quincy. Um, Lamb's doing a great job. Any chance he gets, he's you know he, he's been rolling out well. Um, he looks poised. He looks very comfortable. All right, so again, 14 nothing. Number 32, Tomas Silva. Silva kicks it off deep. Fielded at the 20-yard line by Hingham. Irwin gets the ball. Austin Irvin on and the return. Number 13, Austin Irwin across the 35. To the 38. Here the Hoberman will go back on offense. Get up to First about the 38-yard line, does Irvin on the return. And it looks like they're on spot at the 39, actually. So again, good field position to start this drive for Hingham. Some confusion for Quincy in the past two plays. JT Bain was late getting out into the field on the kickoff, and Alex Leo was late getting out on defense. A handoff for Hingham goes up the middle, number 45 on the carry. That's Liam McCarthy. He'll get up to the 44. To the 44 yard line. That's Hingham's That's strength right there is a run up the middle with the fullback. What that will do is um, it'll soften up Quincy's defense to, to play the other plays, which is jet sweeps and stuff. So you have to set up for it. If you want to do jet sweep, you got to run up the middle. If you want to run up the middle, you got to do jet sweeps. It kind of goes hand in hand also with offensively uh, when you want to pass the ball. Second down and five now for Hingham. Ball spot at their own 44 yard line. Clock ticks down with 4.30 left to go in the half. And the quarterback's gonna keep it himself. That's number nine, Caleb Brody, but he can go nowhere. Nice job by the Presidents. And a no gain, maybe a half a yard on the play. Great job by the presence. You know, a few of these players are playing both ways. Alexandre being one of them, he was in on that tackle. Um, just did a great job. You got to contain him. Now, now you, you bring up a third and four. Um, this is a good chance for Quincy to to stop him here. If they stop him, it's most likely they're going to punt because where they are on the field at the 45. You know, to gamble like that, you're down 14 points. Pretty hard. So Quincy's got to do a good job right here on this 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 actual play. Third and four now for the Hoverman. Brody goes into the shotgun. Looking to pass, fires, and it is incomplete. Goes way over the head of the intended receiver. Pass intended for number eight, Pat Keenan. Pass was intended for Pat Keenan. Bring up fourth and four for the Hoverman. So they're going to put Monroe and, and Fields back there. Oh, they're going to try to fake. fake punt on themselves. There is some room. Berger trying to get outside, and he's going to be very close. It looks like he's going to get the first Double down. Five, on a fake punt. You know, Hanska Ross Fields was getting field. ready to run up to, to offset that, and then he pushed back to go back there again. I think the, the Quincy kind of sniffed it out in the beginning, and then they pushed him back again. Ten's going to do a better job with that. Um, you know, Mason has to be able to contain him. If you stay out there and contain him, um, he's not making he's that first that down. It was, first it was probably down. within inches of him making that first down to get out of bounds. Um, that's number five again, Benger. He's a great back. He's got speed to the outside. You can't let him into open field. That's a big, great break for Hingham. All right, so two fake punts have resulted in two first downs, one for each team. 
Payne will take over now at midfield. Brody looking downfield and it goes incomplete. Was looking for Austin That's Irvin. Incomplete. Intended for number 13, Austin Irvin. Brody's been a little overthrowing his passes tonight. He's just been, been not on down. target. Taking the bus ride over from Hingham. You know, Quincy's, Quincy's not played well on the, on the road. They've lost to Braintree, they lost to Silver Lake by one point each, but they've played well at home. We're already, you know, three minutes left in, into the, this, this first half and they're up 14-0. So they play well at home. And you know, and it, you know, it's too bad for North Quincy. They've been on a road, the road a lot. Yep. It's hard to play, you know, the, you know uh, but Quincy's been, been very successful at home, so. And Quincy's actually played fairly well on the road too, just a couple of tough breaks on right, each exactly. game. Right, exactly. Second down and 10 now, again at midfield for the Harbormen. Brody under center. Sends Benger in motion, and it's gonna be a reverse. And well, wide open high. space here. Ryan McGuire over to the left side, across the 30 yard line, and deep into Presence territory. Alexander is gonna bring him down at the 21 yard line. It's too bad we don't have the replay on this because Heinze totally misplayed this, and he carry. just let him Ryan run right McGuire. by him with, on, the, uh, on the jet sweep reverse. Heinze was running in the opposite direction and did not see him do the reverse. Um, it's too bad we didn't see the replay, but the, for the viewers out there that were able to see that, he was totally faked out. Big break for Hingham. It certainly is a 29 yard gain uh, up to the 21 yard line of the President's first and 10 now for the Harbor men, under three minutes to go. Benger goes in motion, and I think Quincy called a timeout just before the play started, and they did. Timeout, President. The coaching staff was uh, motioning <laughs> vividly to the uh, players trying to get them to move around and switch up the defense a little bit, uh, but they decided to call a timeout to play it safe. Looked like it was uh, uh, Coach Kevin Carey over there trying to get attention of his players. Yeah, they had an overload right. They, they they basically had a big, you know, all the linemen on the right hand side. And you know, he saw something. You don't want to take a chance here. You know, they're doing well with 14 uh, lead here, but you know, there's three minutes left here in in, in, the, in the half. You don't want to make a bad play, and next thing you know, they score. So, uh, very smart timeout, well used. Kevin Carey will definitely talk it over, defensive coordinator with the with the group. Coach Ridden's in there right now as well, trying to say, hey, listen, I might see something. You know, up here at high school football, we're up here in the booth, but there's people upstairs from here that are that have the headset on, um, and they're definitely giving information down to Coach Ridden, and Coach Ridden's, uh, you know, giving that information to different people on the team, different different uh, coaches. So, um, what we see up here in the booth, we also have an eyes above us, on top of us, mm -hmm. watching it as well. And that that goes for both teams. You know, Hingham probably has a couple guys up there. Um, seeing what's open, seeing what, what, what weaknesses are out there. Handoff over to the left side for Hingham. Alexandre in on the tackle, Both as well as number 72, number Devin Brody. Pierce. That looks like Jake Brody on the carry there. He's a sophomore. Um, must be the younger brother of uh, Caleb Brody, the, the quarterback. I'll bring up second and Six for the so up to the 17-yard line, second down and six now for Hingham. Peter. Looks like Brody is changing the play at the line of scrimmage or going some extra instructions. Berger on the carry. Excuse me, uh, Benger on the carry. He's gonna get to the 13 yard line. That Benji, he's got great acceleration. Five, I, I, the moves Benger and the quickness carry. of him scares me up here he's in the booth. Wild. If he gets into open field, that kid's gone. And uh, he's just shifty, Third and two. quick. Reminds me a lot a bit of uh, Jalen Green as well. You know, just shifty. Jalen Green from last year, uh, the tailback for Quincy. Yeah, certainly had a, uh, an all-star season for the Presidents last year. Third down and two now for Hingham. And Brody's gonna keep it himself, trying to get it on the quarterback sneak. 
And Number we'll see where they nine, spot the ball. Caleb Looks like he's going to get a gain of one on the play, but not enough for the first down. Great play by the Presidents. They stuffed that hole up really well. Uh, maybe we can get a number in there, the 74. Declan Mayo did a great job. Did not reach the line to gain. That'll bring up a fourth down and two for the Harbormen. So they're going to say no gain on that play, so remain. Uh, and time has been called by Hingham. So bring up now a fourth and two. Actually, no, I'm sorry, they did move the, the, uh, the ball up just a little bit. So it's going to be uh, fourth and one. Hingham needs to get to the 11-yard line for the first down. They come with a full house backfield, including Liam McCarthy, the 6'1", 230 fullback. Benger gets the carry, and he dives forward and will pick up the first down. He'll get up to the 10-yard line. Number five, Sam Benger on the carry. Running behind those two big guys <laughs> with that type of speed, that, that was a good, good first down for them. They, they got the chains moving here. So the ball is spotted right at the 10-yard line. So first and goal play. for the Harbormen from the 10. First down. Coming up on a first minute to go here go in the, the uh, second line. quarter. Quincy's defense looking to step up big here. Hingham taking their time to get into the line of scrimmage as well. They do have some timeouts to call, so that's probably the reason why. Brody looking to pass, trying to set Great the screen. Great job. job by the presence to bring him down. A huge loss, and Hingham calls timeout. That was the big break that Quincy needed. It was first and 10 on the 10-yard uh, yeah, right. line, you know, first and goal to go, and look where they pushed him back to. It's a loss of... 10 Ball yards. Nine on the play. Second and goal to go from the 19 yard line. It's going to change a lot of play calling now. That was a big break for Quincy. If Quincy could stop him right here, that's going to be great momentum going into the half. That was Hingham's second timeout, so they still have three timeouts remaining. 43.9 seconds left to go in the half. Quincy's in the driver's seat here because it's it's second and 19 and goal to go. So they basically have three plays to make it in um, because they started on the, at the goal to go on the 10. So there's no way of making a first down here. And Hingham pretty much has their whole playbook to work with. Again, they have uh, 43 seconds, but they do have the three timeouts left. So even if it's a run, they can stop mm -hmm. the clock um, here on second and goal from the 19. We got a good crowd here tonight, John. I'll tell you, there's quite a bit of people here tonight. Yeah, certainly a nice crowd. I think a lot of them stuck around from the first game as well. It was a double header. North Quincy played Pembroke at 4:30, and then a lot of fans came in for the Quincy game as well. So good to see that. Brody back to pass, looking in the end zone, has a man, and can he hang on? And he does. Yeah, Touchdown, Hingham. Three. Goes to number eight. Pat Keenan. Eight, Pat Keenan. They let him get behind him, and you know and that's the, the one play you don't want to do is you want to get beat deep. And, uh, maybe some miscommunication leading. between the safety and the corner, the but you know it's second and 19. You you're basically playing back, and you got the field to your advantage because it's, it's you know short field, and you still let somebody behind you. So it must have been a blown coverage. Hingham will go for the extra point. John Fisher on the extra point attempt. It is high and it, it is, is good. good. And the team's head up field. The so Hing comes back and is able to convert team. on a second down seven. and goal to go from the 19 yard line. And they get the touchdown. So Quincy's defense a little deflated after that drive, but they still lead 14 to 7 with 36 seconds left to go in the half. Yeah, Coach Carey's down on the sideline talking to Ten Mason and, and, and Hanscom Fields and saying, okay, it's third and 19. You, you can't let that happen um, with, with, with that type of momentum. So, you know, it's 14-7. Kingham's most likely not going to kick it to number seven. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, they're probably going to kick it to the other 
or they may swib it here with 36 seconds left in the half. Three, two, Phil Haller kicking off for the Harbormen. Phil Haller will kick off, the and the it's seven. a squib kick. Field at the 25-yard line by Monroe. Number 40, Mike Monroe is going to take the kickoff. Yeah, he's going to get up, up to, to the 35-yard line. line. He knew it was going to be a swift kick. He wasn't even using a tee out there, so he kicked it right off the ground. I don't know what Quincy can do here. They could be conservative and just, you know, basically run a few play, like running plays, or they could come out and air it out. Quincy comes out with three receivers bunched up to the right of Lamb. Bain is wide left. Lamb back to pass, looking, looking, looking towards Bain. He's covered, and he's going to throw it away. Nice job there by Lamb. Gets out of the pocket and throws the ball away. Pass incomplete. Looked like he was looking for Bain, who was going down the left sideline. Uh, nice coverage there by Bill Pershing for the Harbormen, who was on Bain. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you can tell Lamb is getting more experience. It wasn't there. You just throw it away. You have another down. He's getting, you know, having that whole sophomore year to play, and now in his, in his junior year, he just looks very comfortable back there. All right, this time Quincy goes four receivers, two to each side of Lamb. Alexandre, the lone man in the backfield. Lamb looking downfield, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Monroe. Nice coverage by 40. Matt Giarusso for the Haberman. Rob Monroe, incomplete. 16 seconds left to go now. Third and 10 for the Presidents. You know, you see Robbie Monroe out there. You see JT Bain out there. You know, winning will bring out more kids from the other teams. You know, they're both basketball players. Monroe plays baseball. They didn't play, uh, Monroe didn't play two years ago. JT Pay didn't play last year, but seven and four record. Uh, Jalen Green and, and the Jaquan Harris's of last year have got these kids to come out and play for their, their senior year. You know, very important to get these guys to come out. Um, we also got a little on the field here with Watt and seeing the Quincy Sorry, Point Panthers. They're getting ready for the halftime show. Um, you know, the youth's, uh, you know, basically feeder systems for the Quincy High School and North Quincy High football teams. Um, they're going to be played at halftime here. Um, Quincy Point Panthers. We play in the West Quincy Elks, um, and we got a little bit of we got the Elks right here on the field right now um, on the screen. Both two teams for the Vasi uh, were in the championship game last year. And we're back to action at Quincy. Yeah, we'll talk more about the youth football league in just one second. Third and ten now. Handsome Fields with the pitch over to the left side. It gets across the 40 up to the 45, has the first down, and he can knock it out of bounds. Fields on the carry. And clock will stop. Out of bounds, but the result of that play is a president's first down. He is just an explosive back, and you know, he could get the first down there. Even though he didn't get out of bounds, they could first use a timeout. Presidents at their own 47 yard line. Initially, they said he was in bounds, but now I'm trying to see if it's going to be out of bounds or not. And Quincy calls a timeout, so that's going to ensure that clock will not stop. That's their fourth. They have one remaining. No, I've heard that the uh, the Elks said the Point Panthers were an easy victory last year in the uh, the championship game. They said the coach wasn't really uh, too into the game. I don't know if you have anything to respond to that. You know, it was a tough one. Uh, they, it was 20 to seven at halftime. We had the lead, the Quincy Point Panthers, and. Uh, the Elks came out the opening possession, made it 20 to 14, and they actually squeezed it out with 43 seconds left. They they beat us 27-20. Uh, we were able to get the ball back and get it down to like the 20-yard line, but we ran out of time. I'll tell you, it's really good for the high schools because both of these two teams, the Elks and the Panthers, uh, majority of the Elks go up to the Quincy High School. Um, the great feeder system. You know, Quincy's uh, freshman team last year went 11 and 0, so. Uh, they're feeding great kids up to this, this this level, and a lot of these kids have come out of that Quincy Youth Football League. 
because we we joke with Noel, who's the head coach <laughs> of the, uh, the, the the Panthers. So uh, doing a great job as uh, all the uh, youth football coaches and volunteers and staff do to uh, get the youth in the city playing football. And ball uh -oh. is tipped at the line of scrimmage and is picked off by Hingham. And they're going to get the ball up to the 40-yard line, and the clock will run out, though. So pretty much no harm, no foul there on the last play. Quincy was looking to get some action going there on the last play of the game, but it's picked off. So we head to the halftime with Quincy on top of Hingham by a score of 14-7. Quincy was able to come out early. Noel get a 14-0 lead. Uh, they had some trouble on second down, it appeared, in the half. Mm -hmm. They had a, a penalty, um, a holding penalty, which set them back, and a couple of incomplete plays. Um, and then Hingham was able to come back, as we saw just a little while ago, and get seven points on the board before the half. Uh, what do you think Quincy's going to do here in the second half to try to get the uh, offensive engine going? Well, what I think they should do, and I've been saying this for the last few weeks, is give Hanscom Field the football. Um, he, he's an explosive back. He's a kid that will break it to the house. He'll, he'll change the complexity of the game. He's a kid, and that's why I asked you earlier, what does it look like? What was who scored and what was who got the carries for last week? You don't want to take any chances. You've lost to Braintree by one point. You lost to Silver Lake by another point. You don't want to take any chances. You're here at home. It's 14-7 now. You come out second half. He hasn't touched the ball. He touched the ball once or twice in the first half. Give him a few touches. The kid is explosive. And, you know, I like Alexandre myself personally, and I know Coach Reardon sees things ab about him. But, you know, split the carries up. You know, try out something different. So I like to see that second half. All right, so again, score 14-7, to 7, Quincy on top. We're going to take a quick timeout, and we'll be back with second half coverage in just one moment. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. The Presidents have a lead over the Hingham Harbormen by a score of 14 to 7. Real quick, we'll run down the scoring recap. James Lamb got on the board first for the Presidents. He had a 10-yard touchdown run. Uh, it was all set up by a fantastic kickoff return, opening kickoff by Javi Hanson Fields. He was able to turn the ball back uh, deep into uh, Harbormen territory. And a couple plays later, Lamb ran the ball in, so got Quincy on the board, 7-0. Uh, then later on in the second quarter, James Lamb was able to drop back and find Matt Hines for a seven-yard touchdown pass. And with the extra point by Tomas Silver, Quincy was up 14 to nothing. And then later on in the second quarter, Caleb Brody was able to drop back for the Harbormen. And a pass was complete to Pat Keenan. It was a 19-yard touchdown pass on second down and goal. And Hingham was able to get seven points after the extra point. Uh, so that made it 14 to seven. Yeah, so Hingham will be getting the ball first, so Quincy's going to have to do a good job on coverage, and uh, you don't know what was talked about in the in the locker rooms. It was a long, it was a long halftime show for 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 both squads to be in the locker room. So um, you have to get out in the field, and you got to get a little warmed up before you know halftime was probably about 20 minutes today um, with the with the youth football out there. Yep. Um, and the cheerleaders as well with the halftime show. So you know um, you do get tightened up in the locker room. Um, it's getting a little cooler out here. It's probably, you know, we started the game at 60 degrees. It's probably about 55 right now, 50. Um, but you still got to warm up those legs to get ready for this half. Number five, Sam Benger. And number 13, Austin Irvin. Deep to receive for the Harbormen as we begin the second half. No, we were right on the money. So 55 degrees, and that's what I have on my uh, trusty little weather app here. So uh, we'll, we'll get the weather channel. You must have been talking to them earlier on. So uh, here we go for the second half kickoff. Fielded by Hingham at their own 25-yard line by Ryan McGuire. Running over to the right side and finds a little bit of space. He'll get up to the 42-yard line. Missed tackle there by Quincy and, 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 and one of the up men that grabbed the ball for Hingham made it up to the 42-yard line. So it's good field position for Hingham. Um, like you said before, you know, Hingham will take that. Their head coach um, will take this field position. Once again, we remind everybody that members of the cheerleading squad here at Quincy High. All right, so first and 10 for the Harbormen at their own 42-yard line. Are seeking donations to support the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. 
Please give generously. And he's going to go to number five. That's Sam Benger. Uh oh, on the left what side. I say? And he is going to go all the Benger, way. No, nowhere. 20, or any Quincy Benger, blue shirts in front of him. First play from five, scrimmage, and Benger Benger takes it all the way to the house. I tell you what, John, I, I, I know when I'm watching, we're gonna watch the replay right here, I know speed, and the kid has just got phenomenal speed into the open field, and you know they were able to contain him in the first half. Uh, if we get the replay here, number five has got a speed. Um, he's probably running a 4 4 4 5 40. Look at this, watch this, he accelerates right now. He's not even running full speed, and then he accelerates, so there was nobody even touched him. A 58-yard touchdown run, and... Um he, he was able to explode Brody through that Knight hole, though. No. Uh, extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So Finish Hingham, good. we talked about Quincy striking 14. quickly in the first half. Well, Hingham Finish says, we're going to do you one better. First play Quincy from scrimmage, and they take it all the way, and we are tied now at 14. Quincy's going to have to do a better job. they got to come right back out. Coach Reed's going to talk to James Lamb, saying, you know, okay, we have to engineer this offense. Get a good return, come right back at it. Because if you come out of halftime like that, real flat, first play of the game, uh, first play of the second half, and they take it to the house like that, um, it could be, you know, not doing well in this next series. You know, the game momentum switches, and, and, and it's in, in Hingham's hands. So, you know, I, I, I guess in the locker room for Hingham, they got all pumped up. First play, they're gone. So let's see what Quincy does. They'll be getting the ball here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really strange, the, the, the kicker, uh, for, for Hingham does not use a tee. Uh, I'm looking down the field again and he's not using anything. So maybe he's a soccer player converted to a football player. All right, kick goes into the hands of Robin Rowe at the 22 yard line. And Rowe, nice job there, put his head down and take the hit from Hingham up to the 35-yard line. Tackled by number 13, Austin Irvin. And another thing is, is they've definitely been scouting Hanscom Field, so they probably don't want to kick to him. So they said, we're not going to kick it off the tee, we'll kick it off the ground, and, and one of the up men will take the take the, uh, the kickoff. So you, don't, you know when he touches the ball, he, anything can happen. So you know Hingham did, must have did a pretty good job on scouting Quincy and not to kick to him. Especially learning on the first half too, we kicked to them and kicked yep, to right. uh, handsome fields and made them pay. All right, so first and ten for Quincy. Alexandre is going to get the carry over to the left side, trying to get outside and just couldn't get the corner there. Two, He's going to get a gain Alex, of Alex about Alex seven on the play. play. Uh, actually, make it nine to the, to the 44. Line. Alexander did a great job, you know, he, he's a good back, he'll, he'll find the hole and he'll do it, and, and that's what he did, he's got the nine yards, you know, Alexander has done great, he's got eight yards here, nine yards here, they've had second and ones before and they've been not able to move the chain, so it's good and real important here to get this first down. So second down and one now for the Presidents, and Alexandre... Second effort there, nice job by him. He was held up and stopped at the line of scrimmage, fought his way forward. He'll get the first down up to the 47, and a first down moving chains. And we'll take a look at the replay of that second effort by Alexandre. Nice little iso up the middle. You full back right in front. Maybe they pull the guard from the other side, and uh, Alexandre looks stop. And what, what's great about this back is he continues to move his legs forward and gets the first down. I mean, he's great, great short, short yardage. Um, running back. First and ten for the Presidents. And Lamb bobbles snap a little bit. He's getting off to Alexandre. He crosses the 50 over the 45, up the 40, and he gets knocked out of bounds. Alex Another Alex nice Alexander. run there by Alex, Alex Alexandre. Great job by uh, Lamb. He, it was a bobbled kind of snap. It, it didn't look like he got it cleanly and he, he shifted, he kind of shuffled past it out to uh, Alexandre and Alexandre picked up, had a couple lead blockers out there and uh, gained a nice, uh, you know, 18, 19 yards there. So chains move for the presence yet again. Ball spotted at the 37 yard line. Coming up on nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. Alexandre with a carry over the left side. Again, hits that hole and explodes through, and he'll get up to the 30-yard line. 
You know, Quincy came out first half and did a lot of passing. They're coming out second half and they said, let's just go to the running game. And, you know, this is very successful. You continue to run the football like this, you'll be able to open up the passing game. Um, that's how it kind of works in, in, in any type of style football, whether it be high school, college, pro. you got to set up the run for the pass and the pass for the run. And that's what they're doing with the running game right now. It's, it's very successful. High formation behind Lamb. Again, Alexander in the carry. And watch him move that pile forward. Nice job by him. And he's going to be right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot the ball. Looks like a pretty good spot. They say the spot at the 27 yard line. And they're saying first down for the Presidents. Whole object and successfulness of Quincy's offense will be to move the chains. Alexandre, 13 carries for 64 yards so far here today for the Presidents. Quarterback James Lamb, the junior for the Presidents under center. Again, gives it to Alexandre, and they're working their horse right now. And he's going to get up to the 25 yard line for Quincy. Alex on the carry. You know, you're going to continue to Number give Alexander the football. At some point, you're going to hear there goes Hanscom Fields um, into the huddle right now. So you, you can you can ground pound it right with Alexandre and put Hanscom in there for, for a few carries and see what happens. So um, I always I always like him in the backfield because he's explosive. So second second and eight, I believe. All right, goes to Hanson Fields over to the left side. We'll see what he can do. Trying to get outside, he does. Gets across the 20, has the first down. It gets pushed out of bounds at about Number the 15 seven, yard line. Java Hanson Fields, Hanson Fields the picks up the first down and they're gonna spot it at the 13, as you can see here on the replay. You're gonna watch this explosiveness here. He takes it, boom, he pops it outside and gets that extra yardage. And it, and he gets, it gets 12, 13 yards out of that. And it doesn't look like he's running full speed. And he, if he's running full speed, I mean, he's gone. And we'll see here in this, in this, if they leave Hanscom Fields in, uh, how explosive this running back is. Now Hanscom Fields remains in the ball game. Sid Monroe in motion. Lamb trying to get out of the pocket, looking, throwing in the end zone, and was looking for Monroe. Monroe did a great effort to try to bring it in. Cannot, though. You know what they do with that is put the receiver on the right on the bottom of the screen here, JT Bain, and he's at such of the bottom of the screen that you can't even see him in, 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 in the screen. He's way out there, and it opens up the field for, for Lamb to kind of roll out and do his thing and, and you know he got flushed out a little bit more and he rolled out and tried to make something happen. Second and 10 from the 12 for the Presidents. Yeah we got a wide you know wide vision here with, with, with yeah. JT Bain on the bottom. Now we go in and he's, you can't even see him. Anson Fields with the carry over to the left side runs into his own man keeps going yeah, forward though and yeah, let's see where they spot the ball looking at the Close six. And let's see where they spot the ball. It is at the six. Third and three for the president. So third and three, John, you still, you still have two more yards to go so they can get a first down and then move the chains. And I think no matter what, four down territory here for the presidents, they don't get it on this play. Sweet. Handsome fields to the right side, cuts back up the Look middle. He's going to fight his way and in for the touchdown. He goes. Touchdown, President Java Handsome Fields. He thought he was going to go to the outside. He picked the hole. He cut it back. And we'll watch it here. It's a great cutback by Handsome Fields. He's got great vision. And he's only a sophomore. Watch him cut back uh, right now. And he makes it in. It's just, it's just a great play. He's a great running back, and I've been speaking about him for weeks and weeks and weeks up here, John, and down on the field as a sideline reporter. Um, if they continue to give him the football, Quincy will score. 
Tomas Silva with a kick. It is up through the uprights and good. good. So Quincy comes back with a touchdown of their own to answer Hingham. And they take the lead back 21 to 14 with 6.24 left to go in the third quarter. I was just hearing Jeff Hennessy talking about the uh, cheer for Dana Farber down on the field here. Um, and you know, a lot of the um, cheerleaders for the Quincy Point Panthers and even the, uh, the ribbons for the Quincy uh, cheerleaders. Uh, it's for the you know Dana Farber uh, cheer for Dana Farber. So I just wanted to give a little uh, shout out to all them. Also, I was just talking to Jeff Hennessy. He's been up in the booth since 2005, um, being the PA announcer. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Charles Jerth, who recently passed away. And he was a guy um, when I played football here, and you did as well, John. That, that was up in the booth, and you'd hear his voice. And um, he was also a teacher of mine. Uh, I had him at Quincy High School. He was in algebra. Um, very good. He, he had taught my uncles and, and he taught my sisters. And um, I just want to say, you know, to all the viewers out there, you know, Charles Jerf um, was just a great guy. He, he was a great guy in the community. Um, John, did you have him at all? Did you have experience? With I did not know. Okay, yeah, he was just a, a, a great, fine young guy. I mean, he's going to be very, very well missed. I could say that much. He passed away a couple weeks, a week and a half ago. He was 79 years old and. Uh, very legendary in uh, the Quincy, city of Quincy, and the Jerf name as well. All right, on the kickoff, it went out of bounds. to receive Sam Benger. And 13, a little quick audience view here. There's, there's quite a bit of a, um, a crowd here still. We got the late game tonight. Um, it started at 7.30 and it's 9.10 right now and there's still quite a bit of people here in the stands watching this. Uh, Hingham's got a little decent crowd across the field here. Uh, it's not a very far drive to get down here to watch the game. Friday night football. All right, so they're gonna make him kick it again. This time Silva gets it right down the middle of the field. Field at the 23 yard, uh, 26 yard line, excuse me. And that's Irvin on the carry. Austin Irving across midfield. Austin Irving gets across midfield. And that's where the Hoverman will Ball take will over. Be placed at the 49 yard line of Quincy. First and 10, Hoverman. The re kick gives them great field position for the Hoverman, you know. So they got to go 49 yards here to punch it in. And uh, they've got to watch out for number five, and they've got to contain him now. He's become the weapon offensively for them. All right, ball spotted in the Quincy 49-yard line. Caleb Brody, senior quarterback for the Harbormen. So give it to the fullback. Going to get a two or three-yard gain on the play. Number 33, Number 33 Jake, Jake Brody, Brody on the carry. You know, Quincy's strength is in the middle. The front four do a phenomenal job. Um, you know, trying to run up the middle, uh, you can have a hard time with those four. What Quincy lacks in, and they lacked in this last year, is, is in the outside game. Um, once they get outside, you know, the corners don't do fairly a great job with, with containing, and um, it's happened tonight, getting to the outside, and, you know, other teams have been keying on, on getting to the outside. Brody with the fake, Ooh. and he's going to get sacked. We'll see if that's a fumble or an incomplete pass. And it's going to be an incomplete that pass. Incomplete. Big play there by number 44, Jake Bergonzi. Bergonzi's oh, name again. He's doing a great job. He went on there. Uh, I think he was untouched. And we'll watch this on the replay and see if anybody picked him up and tried to block him. He comes untouched, and boom. That was almost the tuck rule there. <laughs> so... Um, you know, he was kind of motioning going forward, so, you know. Yeah, the ball was still in his hand as he was coming right. forward. Uh, you know, you always hear about the uh, the open hand <laughs> if, uh, for the fumble or not, but uh, the ball did go forward with his hand uh, in front of him. So it is an incomplete pass. Third down and eight now for Hingham. So big third down here for the Presidents. Sent a man in motion. Brody back to pass, fires way downfield, has a man, and it's incomplete. Was looking for Sam Benger, 
and just out through the speedy Benger. Yeah, he's overthrown the ball a lot tonight. Um, he's just sipped it out there a little bit too much. It's a big stop for Quincy. I, I think the Hingham will punt on this one. I don't know. I don't know if they'll try a fake here as well. Bergonzi had nice pressure again from behind, and that, uh, put a little bit more pressure on Caleb Brody, the quarterback for the Harbourman, to get that ball away. And Quincy's going to call a timeout. Thirty second timeout. Looked like an unfortunate situation. It looked like Hingham was having some trouble trying to get the right personnel in the field, and Quincy is forced to call a timeout instead. Well, you know they've already tried a fake, so they may try it again. And, and if, if they don't convert it, Quincy's still got to go half of the field to, to to make it and make it in. So, you know Hingham can risk it and try it try a fake again. So. Yeah, you know what it looks like actually, number 40 for the Presidents, uh, Robin Rowe, is limping off the field, so I think they call a timeout okay. to get him off the field. All right, Benker's going to kick it away for Hingham, and Quincy's going to get out of the way and let it roll deeper into the territory, and they'll pick it up at the 13-yard line. Where the presidents will go back on offense. First and ten presidents. So it'll be first and ten for the presidents. Five eleven left to go here in the third quarter. Quincy still on top, twenty-one to fourteen. Yeah, Jonathan cool. Clary here with Noel DeBona up in the booth for QA TV Sports. Wanna well, thank you for joining us here tonight. It's been uh, quite a night of football, quite a day of football, Noel, mm -hmm. here at the stadium. Uh, if you're just tuning in, North Quincy High School played Pembroke High School. And the first game of a doubleheader, Pembroke won that game. That was a 4.30 start. And then this game started a little bit after 7.30. So it's a little bit later than normal here at Veterans World Stadium with a football on Friday night. But it has been a fantastic night and fantastic weather for football as well. Looks like Alexandre there on the carry didn't pick up much, maybe one yard at best. Number two, Alex Alexandre on the play. Uh, looks like going to say no gain on the play. No gain. Second and ten for the president. You also got to be careful here throwing the football because Hingham can intercept it and take it in. They go back to the run. Alexander on the carry again. Go up the middle and trying to break free. Almost broke free and had some space over towards the sideline. Got rung up by the ankles, though. But a nice gain on second down for Alexandre up to the 18, as you'll see on the replay. One thing about Alexandre, he keeps on moving his feet. He's not going to go down on one hit. That's the great thing about him. He's not a breakaway speed runner. However, he's a, pa he's a power back. Um, and he'll pound out and get you those extra yards, and uh, he'll also get you the first down yardage that you need. So the two running backs are different total styles of running. Third down and five for the Presidents. And they're gonna fake the pitch. Lamb trying to get out of the pocket. Fires downfield, and he overthrew his intended receiver, number 45, Jalen Chase. for number 45, Jalen Chase. Down. You know, Lamb's been very successful on rolling out and actually running. And he had he second half he has not been running out of that. He's been uh, rolling out, trying to stay in and, and, and throw the football. And uh, it just hasn't been very successful. And you know, at, at you know fourth and five, he, he might have ran that and got the first down. And remember, at the same token, you're here to make first downs and move the chain, especially with deep in your territory. And uh, I thought James probably could have ran that. And uh, you know. Number five, you, James Lamb. You do if you don't, you do if you, do, you know, so I think Lambs can, can run a little bit more and take the chance. All right, so presidents are forced to punt. Benger and Irvin back to receive, and Irvin's going to take it at his own 50 yard line. He's been dangerous here tonight in the return game. This time the presidents will not let him get too far. He's going to get up to about the 43-yard line. So Hingham got the ball. They punted. 
Quincy couldn't do anything and they punted it back. So it's right around the same possession that they had it. So, but this is great field position for Hingham. Um, so Quincy's going to need to do a real good job here. 21-14. It's, it's a one. It's a one-score game and an extra point. So. It's a great football game, John, I can be honest with it you. It certainly is. You nice know? football game. We've seen a lot of good football games here this year at the stadium. Actually, the past couple of years we've seen a lot of good mm -hmm. games. Quincy's been able to score. They've been able to score points, and that's that, that's really good. But at the same token, they've let up some points too as well. Yeah, Quincy's averaging 24.8 points per game this season. So as you said, they can put up some numbers on the board. All right, first and 10 for the Harbor men at the Quincy 43. Brody looking the pass downfield, and it is complete to Austin Irvin. Austin Irvin with the reception. Brody was on target this time, so he's been overthrowing it, and finally he's, he's clicked. So we'll look on the replay here. It's a pretty well-thrown ball. I thought he had him beat. Um, he had to make up some speed. It was uh, Ryan Turpin there. He was a little bit beat, and he had to, uh, you know, and 23 was coming over a little bit late. Armin Cardosa. So you don't want to let up those big plays right here. Momentum shift and, and, and Hingham actually driving. 20-yard, 27-yard pa pass, excuse me, for Hingham. First and 10 now from the Quincy 16-yard line. Quincy on top, 21-14, under three minutes to play in the third quarter. Send a man in motion. That's Ryan McGuire, flag thrown on the play. And it looks like this one might be coming back. Number five. Sam Bender on the carry. There is a flag on the play. Wait for the call, and we'll take a look at the replay in just a second. We'll see what the uh, the penalty is. And it's a hold against Hingham, and we'll take a look at the replay real quick. See where they threw the flag. As you can see, uh, mm, it's right there running at the end of the bottom. Of the Holding field. number 79, White. First down. It's a good break for Quincy. Let's see if they can capitalize on it. Like again, you cannot let up the big, big play here. Don't let anybody behind you. Use the field to your advantage. You got, you know, it's a shortened up field. And Brody stumbles as he was trying to get back, Ooh, and he gets hit by huge. Hines and brought down for the big sack. Matt oh, Hines boy. comes up with a big play there for Quincy. Huge play by Quincy. Oh, I was just saying play. that now it brings up a second and... Back to the 35-yard line. Almost 35 yards. So, yeah, we'll so. take a look at the replay here. Hines yeah. was the one that made the hit, but there was some other pressure as well in there for the presidents. He just bulldozes right through. Hines, big kid. He just comes right down. through. He's a two-way player again. He, he started last year as a two-way player. He's a two-way player to, uh, this year. He's just a phenomenal player. You don't hear about him as much. Um, but he, he gets in the trenches and he bulldozes over people. Jake Bergonzi and William Young also putting some pressure on the Hingham quarterback there on that last play. Second down and 29 now for Hingham. Brody's going to go into the shotgun and timeout is called by Hingham. 30-second timer. So, Noel Hingham looked like they were going to have some um, uh, a nice opportunity down inside the five-yard line. However, that gets uh, called back due to a hold and then the big sack by Hines in the last play. So, what would have been first and goal from the four or five-yard line has turned out into second down and 29 from the 35. So, a big turn of events there in the last two plays. And Quincy catches a little bit of a break, so we'll see if the defense can hold here. Possibly four down territory mm -hmm. for Hingham. A punt doesn't really do them too much right now. Brody looking the pass, rolling to his right, looking way downfield. And it is nice play there by number 23, Armani Cardoso. Cardoso, excuse me, on the breakup. Great play by Cardoso. He, he just broke on it well. He might have been able to intercept it uh, just to put it, push it away. It was pretty good. It's going to bring up a third down and long. Um, you can't get beat deep. No matter what, give up a little bit, a 10 yard run play if you have to, but you cannot let up the deep ball. I mean, that's what they're going to be going for here on third down. Like you said, John, it's four down territory, so they'll 
they'll be doing another play. So you just can't get beat deep. If you want to get, give up another, you know, underneath 10, 10 yards, you, you know, that's not a bad thing to do right now. Laquan Mason was also down there on the coverage on the intended receiver, Austin Irvin. And now uh, Hingham calls a timeout. So let's take a look at the replay of that last play. Uh, and you're going to see Cardoso coming over to knock that ball away in the tight coverage uh, from Mason. You can see Brody rolling see how out. he breaks on this. Oh, no, it's a pretty good play. It's a really good play. You didn't know how, uh, where the other defender was going to be. I mean, uh, offend, you know, the wide receiver was going to be. So that, that was a real good play by him. So nice play there by the Quincy defensive backfield. Brings up now a third and long for the Hingham Harbormen. 141 left to go here in the third quarter. I want to remind all of our viewers, if you are wondering when high school football will be replayed on Quincy Access TV, you can log on to our website at www.qatv.org for our program schedules, membership information, and more. Also, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. Search for us at Quincy Access TV on Twitter. Uh, feel free to send us some messages on Twitter or Facebook. We'd love to hear from all of our viewers out there here in the city of Quincy. So again, QATV.org, Facebook, or at Quincy Access TV on Twitter. Third and 29, Quincy jumps off sides, and we'll see if they were drawn or not. Quincy seems to think one of the Hingham offensive linemen jumped. Oh, it's going to be offsides. Oh, Coach Bill Reard is beside himself. It looked like the the right guard jumped, and that's why the defensive line jumped themselves. But it is going to be an offsides on Quincy. Hi, blue. It's pretty loud there, John. It certainly was. <laughs> we got a little bit of the whistle there. That's all right. <laughs> Brody looking to pass, and William Young got hold. No play, or no flag, excuse me. And pass is knocked down there by Hanson Fields. Great play by Quincy. You know, you, you just can't get beat deep. So you contain the quarterback there. I thought they got away with not calling that holding as well. I saw that up here. Um, Hanson Fields did a great job on knocking that down. And it brings up a fourth down. And, you know, they can punt, but, you know, where are you going to get it down to? The, you could still punt it, actually, you know. Because it's such a long to convert here, it might not even be beneficial to even to even try to go for it. You can play field position at this point of the game. So they're going to line up the punt, and they're going to go for a fake. But fake again, yeah. Uh, they Quincy didn't fake has him out. Red, and he throws it downfield, and it oh. is picked off by Quincy. Probably would have been better just knocking that down. down. Right, right, right. Nonetheless, it's picked off by Quincy. Armani Cardoso. So it was almost like a punt. You know, and uh, he intercepted it, and he, he should have just probably knocked that one down. Coach was trying to give him a little encouragement to, hey, you know, he should have just knocked it down. Gave up about 25 yards. So it's going to bring up um, first and 10 on the six yard line. So Quincy's going to have to go a distance to score. You know, you get a lot of options when you, you, you bring in, you have number five, the speedy running back as you punt, so you can do a lot of things out of that. You can roll him out and if he wants he can still punt it if he doesn't he can throw it or he can run all right so first and ten for quincy at their own six yard line and off goes to i believe that was alexandre on the carry and it was 
Number two. Yeah, you might have lost a yard on the play. Yeah, at some point you're going to have to put hands can feel like here he comes back in the game here. Alexander looks like he's limping off, so. I tell you what, I'll, I'll get a little quick. If Hanscom Field gets into the open field by any chance, he can run this all the way back, all the way for a 95 yard touchdown run. That's how dangerous of a back this kid is. All right, Hanson Fields gets the ball over to the right Number side. Seven. And yeah, he's going to get up to the eight-yard line. To the eight. So they're going to let the clock roll down here for the third quarter and go into the fourth. Going to bring up third. You know, well, as we uh, switch sides of the field, Noel, it's going to be third and long for the presidents deep eight, in their own territory. Third, third down and eight we'll from the eight-yard line. The score is Quincy Presidents 21, Hingham Harborman 14. I think Matt Hines might have a little bit of an injury out there. He's been uh, limping a little bit and kind of taking himself out of the game. So, you know, Alexander looks like he's limping as well. So, you know, um, it's the fourth quarter here. So, you know, some of the guys, you know, high school football might have to suck it up a little bit here for the fourth quarter, <laughs> get back in the game and and see what they want, if they really want this. And like you said, John, um, if they win this and they go and beat Duxbury next week and it falls into, there could be a three-way tie um, for, for the division. And the top two teams will go into the playoffs, which is the new format. Quincy uh, losing to Silver Lake uh, two weeks ago because they had the bye last week. Um, kind of was in the driver's seat and Silver Lake has now emerged as the second place. Um, their overall record is three and two. They're two and one in the division. Uh, Duxbury's 3-0 and in the division and 4-1 and overall, so those are the two top teams for right now. And Quincy just needs to take care of business tonight and, um, you know, go, go, go on the road against Duxbury next week and, and, and upset them. But Hingham is still a strong team to, to, besides their record. All right, so again, third and eight for Quincy. On their own eight-yard line, Jolly Hanson Fields in the backfield. They're going to give it to him, and he's going to try to get outside Noel. He's going to get to the ten-yard line and maybe up to the twelve. Yeah, let's see. I think it's look, they, it looks like they spotted at the twelve, but he will be short. And they're going to have to punt. We'll spot the ball at the eleven. Hingham did a great job um, by pinning them on the. Uh, well, it wasn't really that. It, the interception put them on the six-yard line. And they just couldn't get out of that out of that field, you know, inside the basically the opposite side of the red zone. And now they here they are. They got a punt, and you know it'll set up Hingham's great field position. And you got to be careful. These two, these two, uh, you know, back for the for the Hingham Harbormen, they they can take it to the house, both of them. You know. Hingham, and we'll talk a little bit about their offense when they do get the ball. If, if it, you know, they, they doesn't prison. do a fake this deep in their territory, that they've split the ball up. Um, they've they've passed the different receivers. They run the different running backs. They've split the ball up, so you really can't key in on one one player. Um, Hingham, I just see every back in the backfield get touch the football, so you never know where it's going to come from, and you know, and uh, you never you got to always watch out for number five. Lamb gets it, takes his time, and he gets a nice high kick. It's going to be fielded by Austin Irvin at the 45-yard line. A nice coverage down there by the Presidents. Taken by number 13. Uh, number 32, to Tomas Silva on the tackle. Tomas Silva, the kicker, went down and made the tackle. You know, but that, that sets up great field position for, for Hingham. I mean, they got in the 40-yard line, and they only got to go that, that to make a score here. So... Quincy's got to watch out for that wide side of the field. You know, it's on the right hash mark. You have the whole left side of that field. You know, if, 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 if five gets into the open field, Benger, I tell you, he, he's too dangerous. 10 minutes to go here in the ball game. Bingham takes over on the Quincy 40 yard line. 
And it's going to be a slant pass complete. Yeah, so complete. Austin, Ir actually, that's not Irvin. That's number eight, number Pat, eight Keenan. Pat Keenan. Like I was just talking about, John, they've split the ball up with everybody. Everybody's touched Pick the football, uh, thrown to. Second and so you really basically just, you know, whoever your man you're taking, you have coverage on him. You worry about your guy. And you, you stay in your position, stay in your gaps, do your job, you know, and you'll have to be disciplined to contain. You, Quincy's got to do a good job on containing here. They cannot let anybody into the open field, any of those backs. Second down and four. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. And nice Great job play. here by Presidents. They're going to blow up this play. <laughs> William Young was up there for the Presidents, as was number 57, one of the captains, Matt Kozlowski. You want to watch this replay, but Quincy's front four has been doing a great job defensively. They've been stopping so much. Look at the splits. By, what a play. Just gets through, and, and it's going to set up a long, you know, a third, third and ten now. So once was, you know, second and six, second and five is now third and ten. Changes everything. That's a big play by the defense. They need another one right now as well. High formation behind Caleb Brody. Back to pass, looking for Austin. And Aww. it is complete. He will not have the first down, though. He needed to get to the 30. He gets him to the 32. It's going to set up a fourth and two here. We'll take a look at the replay real quick. You can see uh, Austin Irvin doing a nice job on his uh, route running there. He's rolling out to his left. He gets in there. Just gets it in. Monroe comes over a little late, but the good news is, is he tackled him very well and brought him down, and he didn't get the first down. So big play right here. Could be the play of the game. Yeah, fourth and two now. Ball at the 32. And off up the middle, I and I don't think he got it at all. No, it looked like he might have tripped a little bit as well, but credit the defense. I needed a big stop, and they get it. That front four is just something you can really not run out of. They do well in the trenches. You know, Hines. Five, oh, we're going to look at the replay here. I don't know if he follows his fullback here. So they hang him hard Big number 45. The All right, well, we'll, uh, so we'll skip the replay, it looks like. And um, well, here comes Lamb in the offense. You know, 7.45 left in the game. You know, let's see what Lamb can do. Like I said before, if Lamb gets in trouble, Roll out of that pocket and run. You're elusive. Yeah, we saw a run in the uh, very beginning of the game, but not too much recently. And we're going to have a reverse uh -oh. to Monroe, and this uh -oh. is going to get blown up by Hingham. They read that perfectly, weren't fooled by it. Number 40, Mike Monroe on the carry. That's a tough play to call at this point of the game because it, it was first and 10 at the 33, and now they lost you know, close to 10, 10 or more yards. So. This is not good for Quincy. They're going to set up a second and, and 21, and it's, it's tough. It's, that's a play you probably don't want to run at that point of the game. Uh, Quincy took a risk, and it, and it lost. And the ball goes all the way back to the 21. So second down and 22 now. See if Quincy can chip away at this now. Laying back the pass. They're Looking for Bain downfield. He's open. And oh. was he in bounds? We'll see if he, he caught it. Him. And he was. He had one foot in bounds. Great play by JT Bain. We're going to watch this on the replay. The great thing about high school football is you only need one foot in. Oh, one foot. Oh, wait a minute. The other the side judge is going to wave this off. Oh, man. Tough break here. We'll keep a we'll look, watch at the look at the replay here. We'll see if one foot's in. And that's all you need in high school football. Well, I think we'll they're see. also going to say. They might have bobbled it. Yeah, he's going to say he didn't have control. Oh, he didn't it. have control. Yeah. That's right. That's what changes that. And there's no instant replay here, so the, the, other, the other referee came over and said no catch. So a tough break there. Great effort by JT Bain. Looked like Quincy had hit a home run. Instead, it's going to be third down and 22 deep in their own territory.
This is just a tough conversion here, third and 21. You're not in four down territory, and at this point in the game, you wouldn't be going for it on fourth down, even if it was one or two yards away. So you basically have to convert this right now. There's not a lot of plays in the playbook that you can use. Um, you can run a draw play, but you know, for the strength of Hingham, you can string it out pretty good. They're gonna call a timeout. Yeah, Quincy calls a timeout. That's his second of the half. You know, Quincy's gonna be careful here. Um, if they d d decide to go and pass on this one, um, you know, you gotta be careful with the interception. Next thing you know, they're, they're in the end zone. So this is a very big play of the game offensively for Quincy. So it'll be a third and 22 for the Presidents. Ball spotted at the 21 yard line. You know, Quincy, they like to wear the all blue, by the way. I, I looked out on the field. They, I haven't seen them wear the white pants in, in a long time. They, they like to wear the, the blue, blue pants, blue shirts, and blue helmets. And uh, I can't remember the last time I've seen them in the white, white pants, but uh, Coach Reardon really enjoys the all blue look. And uh, I think it's his decision to go with that. And you look down, you see a nice sea of blue. You know, it's tough when they play Situate, though, because Situate has the same colors. <laughs> <laughs> and they played, they played Braintree this year, and Braintree has a similar color scheme, yeah. too. So, you know, you, it's tough to see. They have the ball spotted in the 24-yard line, and I'm not exactly sure why. I believe the ball was on the 21 last play, but... They now have it at the 24. All right, we'll land back to pass, and it's going to be a draw oh, play to Handsome Fields. That's field. just not going to happen. But no, no Hingham they read that play, read that play and brought him down. Another thing is, is, is Hingham smart? They see Handsome Field come into the game. They go, oh, they pro he's probably going to give him the football so they can key on, on that. So, you know. Teams, teams at this point of the, of the year, they've watched a lot of film. They see the trend of different teams, and you know they see the substitutions. They can say, hey, if seven comes into the game, we've got to watch out for him. We're not going to kick to him, and if he's in the game, we've got to key in on him. And that's exactly what they did in that play. All right, so James Lamb back to punt the ball away. And he gets a nice kickoff. Austin Irvin's going to take it at his own 46-yard line. And he'll get knocked out at about the 36. Sets up another good field position for Hingham. You know, 5.58 left in the game, and Quincy's going to have to make some big stops here. And they're going to spot the ball at the 35 yard line. So, great field position for Hingham. 5.58 left to go in the ball game. Quincy on top, 21 to 14, but Hingham is threatening again. Five receivers for Hingham. Send the man in motion, and that's number 21, Ryan McGuire over the right side. A gain of one, maybe two on the play. I'm glad he bobbled the ball and still Number got control and gained one yard. And good job by Quincy. They were going short side of the field and they're on the right hash and they did a little, little pitch out to the right. And they used the sideline to their advantage and Quincy did a good job on that and they got to continue to do that. But you got to watch out for the wide side of the field on the left. And the one good thing about this quarterback is, is he really is not a runner. Um, so you, you keep him basically, you know, he doesn't, he's going to, he's most likely going to throw the football so you can spend a little bit more time and pressure on the receivers or the backs. Second and eight now for the Haberman. He said Benger in motion. Oh. And he's going to try to get outside. Hanson Fields trying to chase him down. He cannot get him but he steps Number out of five, bounds Benger. at the 29 it looks like. Steps out of bounds. He's across the 30. 
I was just talking about that wide side of the field. And what are they doing? Like a, like a deep motion jet sweep and uh, get him into the open field, you know, when he, he picks up a good four yards. They strung it out. Hanscom Field did a good job. Um, he made a decent, decent, um, you know, angle to that. Didn't tackle him, but pushed him right basically out of bounds. So good job. Third and four. Sam Benger is 86 yards rushing in one touchdown here tonight for Hingham. They're going to send him in motion. Brody keeps it himself, and he'll be short of the first down, it looks like. They need to get to the 25, nine, and they're going to put Brody. it just Follow shy, I believe. Close to a first down. Great play, goal, play call by Hingham. You know, I was talking about the quarterback not going to run. He does a quarterback sneak up the middle, so um, they probably saw something under there. He might have audibled it and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to call off the play. I'm just going to run up the middle, so it looks like fourth and inches here. It certainly is. They're not going to measure, which I'm kind of surprised about, but it's going to be fourth down and inches to go. Quincy needs a big stop right here. Five minutes to go now in the ball game. Again, big fourth down here for Hingham. Quincy's come up well on these situations. Let's see if they can do it again. You see Berganzi trying to pump up his line. All right, Hing comes out. They have they spread out the field a little bit. And Brody keeps it himself. And the second effort's going to get him in. The first time, he could not push forward. Brody, but nine. the second effort, as I said, Balls Brody, the quarterback, will Crosses get the first the down. Line. The result of that play will be a Hingham Harborman first down. And he's going to spot the ball at the 24-yard line. So first and 10 now for the Harborman. Brody looking the pass over to the right uh -oh. side, has a man, oh. and Benger couldn't bring it in. He was yeah, wide open, handsome five, fields, trailed him behind. But Sam Benger could not bring that ball in, otherwise he might have had six. We're going to watch this right here. That was a great break by Quincy. Just a little overthrown him, but let's see here. Coming into the screen here, and mm, that might have been the height and the reach situation. He's 5'8". Probably doesn't have a long reach on that. If it was, a, it was a, a taller receiver, you know, probably would have caught that. There's nothing you can do about that as a, as a player. That's you know, you're that you're all that height and weight and reach. So second and ten now for Hingham. 4:07 left to go in the ball game. Caleb Brother gonna oh, pass and he's gonna get sacked. Great. Huge play here by Quincy. William Young, Alexandre's in the play, as well as number 44, Jake Bergonzi. That's Quincy's strength, that front four. They throw a, a linebacker in there to blitz. They just do a great job, and that's been the strength of tonight. Just when you think Hingham's driving and doing well, that front four with a blitzing linebacker or a middle linebacker comes up and makes a huge play. You know, they've bailed Quincy out, the entire football team, is that front four. Um, defensive line getting great penetration and, and just putting pressure on the quarterback. That's a huge play of the game right there. So third and long now, third and 17 for Hingham. Wins defense, as you mentioned, no, they've stepped up big when they've needed to. Brody looking to pass, and they're gonna set up a wide receiver oh, screen, this. ball's in the air. And Austin Irving brings it down, but he will go nowhere afterwards. Great job there by Quincy to come up when Irving bobbled it to bring him down. This is this is just like the last possession where they had a long fourth down and they punted it. They tried the fake punt through the interception. Same situation here. Oh, here's the replay. It just bounces up and it gets time for the blue players to get in there. Boom. Very aggressive defense. I tell you, Kevin Keery does a great job defensively with this football team. The only weakness to this football team on the defensive side of the ball is cutting off the outside game. Containing. Corners have to contain, especially this wide side of the field right now. Don't let up the big play here. That was a loss of one on play, so now brings up a fourth and 18. Ball at the 32-yard line. Benger with the ball. Wide receiver, uh, running back pass. Has a man downfield. And it is incomplete. 
There were four players all around there. And it goes incomplete. Great job there by Quincy to knock that ball down. Quincy didn't let up the big play. We'll watch this on the replay here. It's a little halfback pass. And they go back. Um, they take a risk. He throws it up there anyway just to take the risk. And uh, I think Hanscom Fields is in there. He does a great job here. Goes up. Good jump ball. Mason gets in there. Put the ball in. And you just bat it down on the fourth down and get better possession here. Two minutes and 14 seconds. How many timeouts does Hingham have here? Uh, I think they have three timeouts okay. to go. They may risk it right here to try to stop them on three and out. If Quincy can move the chains here, they I'll could say, probably yeah. kill the clock here and win the game. Quincy needs one first down, I think, to, uh, to end this ball game. We'll see if they can do it. Alexandre, their main man, has some room and just gets tackled. Gets across the 40, up to the 41 yard line. And Hingham does not call timeout. This is Alexandre's style right here. You know, it's, 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 it's minutes in two minutes into the left in the game, and you're going to give it to the bruising fullback, or tailback. He's almost like a fullback. And let him do his thing, you know, and let him pound out those, those yardage that you need. All right, looks like Hames going to save their timeout, maybe assuming Quincy gets the first down, then they'll stop the clock after that. Coming up on a minute 30 now to go in the ball game. Second down and one for the Presidents. Land back to pass. Looks like he's gonna keep it himself and he holds on to the ball. Looks like he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Number five, James Lamb and carry. And now he can, looks like they call a timeout. That was smart by Lamb not to throw that because if he incompletes it, stops the clock. This time, hingham has gotta eat a timeout. So, very good with Lamb rolling out like that. I don't mind Lamb rolling out and trying to get the first down like that. He just could not get it right there. It's going to bring a third and third and two. Um, they lost basically a yard on that one. Quincy's got to make this first down. Hingham's got to stop him. If they do, they'll punt. Quincy's got to make this first down. All right, and Quincy's going to call a timeout now. Smart timeout right there. Talk this over. So the Presidents call a timeout. Big third down coming up now for Quincy. Third down and two. Ball at their own 40-yard line. And as you see on the screen, 121 left to go in the ball game. Quincy on top, 21 to 14. This is a back and forth battle here between these two squads. Hingham in division. Oh, they're 0 2 in the division, though. They're already, already lost two. I think they're still a strong team. Hingham looks, you know, um, I guess they just couldn't get it all together um, with the quarterback situation, overthrowing some passes tonight. We'll see what happens. Still, the outcome of the game is still going, but, but Hingham, I think, is still a strong team. Yeah, we mentioned uh, Quincy, I, we think, still has a shot at the playoffs. Uh, Silver Lake was playing Whitman Hanson tonight at Whitman Hanson. Uh, and Whitman Hanson right now is 0-5, Silver Lake 3-2. So if Whitman Hanson was able to pull off the upset and the Presidents can win this ball game, uh, they would both, uh, Quincy would be 2-1 and one in the division, Silver Lake would be 2-2. Two and two. Uh, And then it would come up with a big matchup for the Presidents next week. They're going to go down to Duxbury and Quincy would need to win that game in order to have a chance at the playoffs. Yeah, Hingham lost a few weeks ago to Duxbury, 30-26. to It was a very close game, and then they lost to Silver Lake, 31-28. So they're both games within three or four points. So you know that Hingham can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best teams. It's just, it just so happens, you know, that they're 2-3. and three. They lost to Oliver Ames, and I'm pretty sure that Oliver Ames is a very strong football team. Yeah, OA is 5-0 and o right now. 5-0. and o. All right. James Lamb keeps it himself, oh, and it looks, like, looks like he's going to be right at the first down marker. It's going to be close. I don't know. The mark doesn't James look good. Very spot in this football. Does not look good for I Quincy. Know. We're going to take these measuring sticks oh, out for this one.
They're going to bring out the sticks and see what happens on this one. This is going to be really close. Time out for an official measurement. And they get the first down. Great oh, job there by Quincy. They needed two and they got two. Quarterback sneak. Quincy just needs to hold on to the football. Uh, maybe even down it. You don't even need to run a, a running play if you don't need to. You know, what was the game last year? They, they tried to run some score. Was it Plymouth South? They tried to run it, and uh, Quincy ended up stripping the ball, getting the ball back, and ended up winning the game, John. Uh, so yep, definitely. you got to be careful. You know, 116 left, you might even just want to down it. So there's no fumbles in this. Lamb gives it off to Alexandre, and he fights his way up to the 45-yard line. Number two, Alex Alexandre on the carry. And Higgins going to call their final timeout. Alexandre's got both hands on the football here, so he, he knows to three, just wrap up. Second and, uh, and seven. Timeout, Higgins. No, I um, was searching around on Twitter to see if I could find out the uh, Whitman Hansen and Silver Lake game. Mm -hmm. And um, Silver Lake won that ball game 35 to 12. Oh, wow. And they did clinch a playoff berth yep, yep. with that win. Um, according to the Silver Lake Athletics Twitter account, and it says, Congratulations to Silver Lake. Been a long time coming, but the Lake is attorney bound. So, mm. uh, again, 35 12, and Silver Lake clinches a playoff berth. It looks like it will be them and Duxbury going to the playoffs from the Keenan Division. Alexander with oh, a carry this. and he look might break free. He gets across the 30 yard line. One man to beat. Big stiff arm there and he gets up to the 22 oh, yard line. Oh, Regardless of playoffs or anything, John, you can also think about a real good season. You know, we you know, Quincy, Quincy wins tonight. They're going to be four and two. They go into a different schedule for the next couple of games, and then they got Thanksgiving against North Quincy. So you can still have a very good season out of this. Walks Alexandre, get right through there. You, you can't beat number five. He's coming in and closing in, but good little stiff arm there. So he spot the ball at the 20 yard line. That's gonna put Alexandre over 100 yards of rushing tonight. Uh, it certainly does, 117 yards rushing now. Yep. He's a solid back, he's a bruising back. He does well and you know, he gets into the open field like that, he can, he can gain a nice 20, 30 yards. So. They're going to down it here. All right, so Quincy takes the knee one more time, and this ball game will be over. So a great job here by the Presidents. They needed to get a couple of big first downs, and they did right at the end of the ball game. So again, one more kneel here for the Presidents, and this ball game will be over. Final score will be 21 to 14. A uh, big victory for the Presidents. Again, we mentioned they needed a couple of big plays at the end of the ball game, and they were able to do that. Hingham threatened several times, Noel, but the defense stepped up both times, and Quincy comes up with a big, big victory, 21 to 14, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over the Harbormen of Hingham High School. That was a great win tonight for the Quincy Presidents uh, against a very good, strong Hingham football team over there. Regardless of the records, throw those out. This team is tough. And to beat a good team like that, you know, they did, did very well. They're 3-0 at home. Um, you know, I think the season as it progresses here on right now, you gotta, you're play, playing Duxbury next week. I think they can go down to Duxbury and beat them. I, I, Quincy's got a strong team this year, and Duxbury's not as strong as they used to be. Then you go into the next um, four game, next three games. You play these teams that are basically don't make the playoffs, so it might not be a tougher, tougher schedule. So Quincy can really do something really great in this season. They can still go, uh, quote unquote, eight and three, nine and two season. I mean, they can still do that. You know, at four and two right now, um, North Quincy's have is struggling. Um, 
with the, with the, with their season right now. You know, they got a lot of sophomores and juniors playing. So on Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, um, you know, Quincy has a, right now on paper, right now with with the health, they have a better team. Um, they have uh, Eddie Gint Gentros down um, from North Quincy right now. Uh, you don't know if he can play for Thanksgiving. So Quincy has a stronger squad as of right now. So again, uh, we're not too sure exactly the playoff system and if we're mm -hmm. right on All that. Right, so right. We, uh, we know Silver Lake has clinched. And um, I, I guess, actually, if, if Quincy wins next week against Duxbury, they would both have the same record, but Quincy would have the tiebreaker with a head-to-head -head matchup. That's so true. I, I could be wrong. That's Maybe right. a matchup here where if Quincy wins next week, they could still go to the playoffs. So I might have spoke too soon earlier right, when I said right, Quincy right. wasn't in. Uh, again, it's a new playoff system. We're not too sure how everything works out. There's different tiebreakers, different ways of getting in and whatnot. Either way, the Quincy team is pumped up. Uh, so a big ball game here for the Presidents. Again, final score, 21-14 to 14 over Hingham. Uh, Alexandre, Alex Alexandre, excuse me, 20 rushes for 117 yards uh, and a couple of big, big turns uh, and rushes for Alexandre at the end of the ball game to win this game for the Presidents. James Lamb, he had a nice big first down for Quincy as well. He finished with 34 yards rushing and one touchdown and he was 3 of 13 passing with one touchdown pass as well. Javai Hanson Fields also had a touchdown for the Presidents, eight rushes for 50 yards and they did a nice job on defense holding uh, Hingham and some of the big players. Uh, Sam Benger, we saw he had some speed. He had only 86 yards rushing and one touchdown. And the big Austin Irvin, he only had 34 yards receiving. He threatened a lot of times, but defense came up, Noel, and a couple of big plays. One was down in the third quarter uh, where Austin was in the, or, excuse me, Irvin was in the end zone, but they were able to knock the ball down to prevent the touchdown from occurring. Yeah, just getting real back to the Duxbury tiebreaker here. The reason why Silver Lake is in is because they beat Quincy head-to-head. -head. So regardless true, of what true. happens, they're first or second place. Duxbury, on the other hand, just like you just said, if they lose head-to-head -to, -head to Quincy, guess what? It's Silver Lake and Quincy. So I think Quincy's got a shot, and that's why I think they're so excited down there right now going, we're going to go to Duxbury next week, and we can beat them and make it into the playoffs as, as, as a second-place team. So we hope to find out more information <laughs> next week and let you know uh, as things progress along here. Nonetheless, it's a big victory for Quincy over Hingham, and that's going to certainly help Quincy in the power rankings mm -hmm. uh, that are available out and about as now. Um, and Quincy is in Division Two South, and uh, before this game started, they were actually towards the end of the power rankings because the teams they had beaten uh, had not won a game yet, so it didn't earn them enough points to boost them up, even though they had a record of 3-2. and two. Uh, They were at number 11 in the 12 team division mm -hmm. in the power rankings. Mm -hmm. However, nonetheless, we hope to have more information. Uh, stay tuned to QATV.org, onto our Twitter feed as well. And next week when QATV Sports is back here at the stadium for the North Quincy versus Situate game, we hope to have a, a clearer picture for you <laughs> as to what's going to be happening uh, with Quincy in the playoffs. We want to thank all of our volunteers that came down here tonight. Uh, to make this game possible on camera, we have Peter Doherty and Martin Dunham. On graphics and replay, Mark Crosby. On audio, Anna El Torre. Our engineer was Chris Potter. Our director, Bill Early. And our executive producer, Elizabeth Campbell. So again, final score, Quincy 21, Hingham 14. For Noel DeBowen, my name is Jonathan Caleri. We want to thank you for watching this edition of QATV Sports. We'll see you next time.